everyone, welcome to our special episode on Miss Universe 2020. Since we have already concluded the preliminary competition, we have more content to draw our judgments and conclusions on because I feel like there was a drought of content also coming from Miss Universe. I was hoping for more interviews with the girls, but I only saw a few interviews where um, only a few girls were selected instead of all of them being interviewed and then released to everyone. And this was also a limited access to media as well. So now that we have more information and we've seen more of the girls, Tita Lavinia and I, my partner in crime. Hi, Tita. Hello, guys. Good afternoon. Thank you, Nicole, for having me back. This is becoming a tradition. So, Tita Lavinia and I came up with not exactly our hot fix because, like I said in our last video, last Miss Universe season, we don't really go for hot picks because, one, I'm not good at it. <laughs> Maybe Lavinia, Lavinia is probably better at it than me. But with the minimal exposure that we have now of our girls, I feel like hot coming up with hot picks will be kind of unjustified. So what we did is we came up with our list of the 10 girls who were the most impactful with their performance during the preliminary competition. And then we kind of will do a backtrack also of their performance throughout the duration before the preliminaries. So, Lavinia, are you ready with your list? Can you show your I'm notebook? <laughs> I'm going to show you my super neat notebook. But this page, for this to look like this, took about five leaves. Same, Here. girl. Same. <laughs> but so mine what is, is super organized. But mine is, well, I tried. <laughs> Let's just yes. say that I tried. <laughs> and you have better handwriting than me. So, here's what we did. We came up with a list of our top 10 most impactful performance that I feel like these girls pretty much solidified their position as front runners during the preliminary competition. And then we merged those two lists. So first, Lavinia and I will discuss um, the ones we picked together, like our similar preferences. And then we're going to share the candidates who made it to our individual lists, but... We didn't agree on that. Okay, game. So I think game. we should start off with India. So what I like about India is I've already covered her question and answer portion during her national pageant in my previous video. I'm going to put the link up in here. But I was like, okay, does she have like a fun personality to match that as well? Because we already know that Miss India is always intellectual like you will always get an intelligent conversation with them so when i saw this video right here where she's donning the red swimsuit yeah, from the swimsuit right. sponsor i was like intelligent sexy spicy and she knows how to have fun she's comfortable in her skin so i got really excited for india and she really proved herself also during the preliminary competition i think she's played both rounds like swimsuit and evening gown she just had that aura about her so india i agree with you but india is not on my swimsuit list for me she did a lot better um at evening gown but that doesn't mean that she did not perform during swimsuit it's just that i had to remove her because the swimsuit list was just so tight i couldn't leave the others in favor of her just because I feel like the others had a little bit of more edge. But that was a painful decision to remove India from my swimsuit list. So up next we have, and she's the reason why I wore red on red today, inspired by Venezuela. I think, I know that you didn't like her evening gown so much, but I feel like she still gave that moment. But what really... Um, solidified her spot in my top 10 for me is that she's a really good speaker. She articulates her thoughts really well. I saw this interview of hers from Telemundo, if I'm not mistaken. And I love her vulnerability in that interview. I feel like when she said that she's not the typical perfect beauty queen who's from Venezuela. Uh, 
I feel like they're really redefining what beauty is now in, in Venezuelan queens. And I also get this aura from her na medyo Gabriela Isler. I agree with you, Nicole. I feel the Gabriela Isler vibe. But if you're endeared to her because of how she speaks, I like her because of her baker thing going on. I mean, every time I learn about an individual or a beauty queen who bakes, it gets me excited. It gives me all that warm and fuzzy feeling. But more than that, I think because she is Venezuela and we have a saying here in pageantry that Venezuela is Venezuela, she was undeniably really good in swimwear. She had a good presentation um, for evening gown for me. It's just that the actual design of the evening gown was something that I was um, not super on board with. I love the ruby red color. I think it was the perfect shade of red. For all women, we have different shades of red, but I think she hit the jackpot with that red. Yeah. And the only thing that um, just made me a little... Uh, you know, 50-50 with how I feel about the dress is because the treatment of the dress seemed like the treatment of Miss Costa Rica's dress from Cat's Time 2018. So it was an off-the-shoulder dress with, I think, a beadwork detail at the bottom that cut her body that made it a little shorter than it should have been. But, you know, that's just me nitpicking. But the presentation is... Venezuela. But other than that, I feel like Venezuela has been performing flawlessly so far. And she's likable, Nicole. Ha? She is a she totally is. different Venezuela because not only is she loud. I mean, when you talk about Venezuelan girls, they usually is um, portrayed as the hostess with the mostess. She's a little mm -hmm. more quiet, a little more reserved, but you know, she's super warm. So yeah, And when she talks, she feels like She's so approachable. Na yan. There's no, there's yan. no air of like yeah. stand, I'm Venezuela. Stand off yes. vibe. Yeah. Okay, our next one, the third one on our list is Nepal. <laughs> <laughs> Nepal. I mean, she has that glow from day one. Uh, she's so ang nipis niya. <laughs> Thinking of a term, but like, ang nipis <laughs> yeah. girl. So she has like this winning aura. I don't know. She could be a really dark horse. What I'm worried about is her Q and A. I don't know if her learning curve is fast enough or steep enough from her national competition because her Q and A that time was not as impressive compared mm. to the other girls that I reviewed. So, but. So many things can change. Like once you're there, once you get crowned, sometimes you, you have a different mindset and then you learn quickly. That's interesting, Nicole. Because right now, when we talk about Nepal with the pageant fans, with the pageant admins, the first thing that comes to our mind, apart from the Nipis factor, is that she is a very good communicator. She speaks good English. You know, she has gravitas. So I was just wondering... Um, the materials that you saw from her were ju were just from the Q and A, or have you seen newer materials from her? Only from the Q and A, only know. from her national pageant. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, like, it's good that you brought this up because then the game could change instantly yes. after that, you know. And I I'm also considering that during her Q and A portion, she was also dealt with. A more difficult question like a more intangible one i remember the question was like what artwork um influenced you the most something along those lines and it was mm -hmm. a type of question that you can't really come up with an answer that's really precise in 30 seconds because you don't really think about oh what was the last art piece that i saw in the museum that influenced me like it was so narrowed down so it's hard to answer it so, okay. to be fair, to be fair, like, there's that um, disclaimer. So, for you to bring that up, that's why I, 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 find, I find this, like, revelation really interesting because we have followed her um, for months now. And whenever we would repost her, it's mostly about her very editorial photos. I mean, she has the body mm. to sell clothes. You know, I think that she has a very commercial face. It's, yeah. Oh, how should I put it? It's racially ambiguous 
I mean, mm. she could pass for Filipino. She could do that Thai thing. She could also be like, she, she could also look Latin again. Like you can't and really box her beauty. Exactly. And then she has that innate elegance to begin with. Another thing is that mm-hmm. I know that she has a backup of like Filipino um, I don't know if just if it's trainers or like Filipino personalities in pageantry helping her. So I feel like that's a well-oiled machine. If mm-hmm. you have, you know, the enthusiastic Nepali uh, organization with Filipino talent honing her and repackaging her the way she's being presented here at Miss Universe, and it really showed with the restraint of her um, pasarela at swimsuit restraint but with power because all you could see are like long limbs and for cute i mean for evening gown that elegance and you know that classic beauty just cannot be denied and she was you know the gown i wasn't so crazy about but i understood that you know when you just see her it's just her face and that bun yeah and that body. i mean just the visual impact of miss nepal is yeah, giving us meals for weeks. And I love that she brought her A-game during the national costume competition also. Yeah, that was fun as well. I mean, that was really well thought of. I mean, considering that Nepal only started sending their delegates um, just 2017. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? And they've been sending for decades. Start. Exactly. Yeah. But, syempre, nainis na naman ako kasi by the time that she revealed the mountains, Diba? In her national costume, the camera already went to the next girl. Why? Yeah. I just feel like it's a missed moment. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The next girl on our list is Miss Indonesia. We have to give this spot to Miss Indonesia because she has performed flawlessly. She is very eloquent. I watched her interview with Telemundo. It wasn't just giving facts like, oh, this is my... This is the cause that I work with, that I, you know, try to pay it forward to. But she also had the personality there because I feel like um, previously there were more memorized lines from their previous yeah. candidates. Yes. But yes. this time she's very conversational. And also she shared that uh, she was doubted by a lot of her fans also for not being able to speak English so well. But now she even used words like naive. Like she uses these English terms correctly without having to, without using it in a show off way. You know, like she really knows how to use words. Like I would assume that she performed well in the closed door interviews. Because she really knows how to express herself. Like, guys, you have to watch your interview. I was really impressed. And she didn't... I feel like this time, they didn't try to fit her into any mold. Like, she was just herself. I'm just really excited to talk about Indonesia. I feel like because of the shared history together, it's almost taboo for me to talk about an Indonesian representative. But... I want to talk about her because this is the same thing that happens every year. We go into, um, you know, these crazy fan wars and then it becomes personal and then it goes to a point where we don't really promote each other's candidates. But at the competition, you start learning that these girls are like the sweetest girls. So Mm -hmm. you start, you know, changing your perspective and then you start seeing them for the way they're prepared they perform and this is exactly the same way i feel about indonesia the first time i saw her i thought she was super manufactured i thought that everything um that they were making her do were just you know not a representation of who she is because you know she's always made up for the full year she's had several photo shoots so we never really took a break with ayu molida we knew her from the time she was crowned up until she you know transformed before our eyes and as much as i don't want to admit it the girl is really performing and i'm not saying showing us you know those really uh well practiced maneuvers or yeah verbal gymnastics but i really noticed the personality this person is light and bubbly and effervescent and she doesn't really have to try she is not Mm -hmm. nasty i mean She's not overly accommodating. She is a little quirky, which I like. And you know what? She's very game. So I, you know, appreciate 
a candidate who's game, who's not super, um, you know, focused, who's not super serious. Apparently, yeah. that's how I, that's how I viewed her. And you know, it also helped when you get um, feedback from people who are there, also from the feedback of our candidate who's fighting there. Um, it helps when they say that Indonesia is actually a really nice girl, and when you see it. Because she is a model, she does have the technical skills, Nicole. So all that needed to be done is to hone those skills for modeling and maybe change it up for pageantry. And I think she was able to do that. And yes, um, we always have a thing of comparing her and making her appear as if she gets things from what Kat has done before. But I think that was really smart to put the armband instead of like some other jewelry that's associated with Kat. Because it made her who she is. And I like that they changed the styling. She didn't have that um, wavy hair. They put it straight this time. So I feel like yeah. she looked Indonesian. More relaxed. And, and relaxed. Yeah. yeah, right? So uh, whatever, whatever direction the Indonesian team is going for, I think they're doing a good job because for me to change my mind and leave some of the Latinas or some of the strong Asians in that list, yeah, for me to swallow this all and include you in my list, you must have been doing really good with something there. Yeah, no, I would like to say that IU is definitely really different from the previous candidates that they've been sending. She has that certain something, yeah. You know that I think only comes from within. Like it's just purely Ayu. You know, it's like it's not something given to her by her trainers, by her mentors. It's it it's not studied. It's just her. Like she just let go and be herself. Why didn't we see this? You know, before why is it unfolding? Now? Maybe because you tend to be more controlled. I don't know. Like your moves. For the girls, I feel like they're more controlled before flying. Especially out. in the Indonesian organization, I think. Next on our list is Amanda Obdam, Thailand. Ooh. Who really gave us that gold sparkly moment. She is both in my swimsuit and evening gown list. Uh, it's just that, you know, we've seen everything from Amanda. So when I saw her in swimsuit, I thought she had a really nicely toned body. I mean, babaihan, that's what we call her body. It's not super ripped, but at the same time, you know, she's toned, she has muscles. And I think uh, she did pull back a little bit, which is good. There wasn't anything over the I love the restraint. Yeah. Me too. I mean... It made her look more technical. It made her look more focused. Um, just very different from, you know, how people are talking about her now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can if I can even expound on that. It's just that for today, it was okay. No talk. Just let me perform. And I was really glad that it wasn't about her luggage. It wasn't about her wardrobe. It wasn't about the pressure of being Miss Thailand. It was about Amanda performing. And what I saw during the prelims for swimsuit, the movements that she uh, showed us for swimsuit was very reminiscent of how she was during Miss Universe Thailand. I thought she was really bright in Miss Universe Thailand. That's why she won. So if I'm seeing the same vibe, now when it matters for prelims, we should be afraid. Well, I also reviewed Miss Thailand's Q&A from her nat national pageant before, and that's my reservation about her. Mm -hmm. but, after her, her, but after her performance in the national costume preliminary competition, I feel like it would still be a grave injustice to not give a spot to Thailand because she's so beautiful, she's so prepared, and without that aura that she's so that she's forcing everything to get everything together and for everything to align for her. She's just letting it happen and trusting her previous training already from before and not having to overdo a lot of things. Like we said, the restraint gives her a little bit more class and identity. That's actually hard to achieve, especially when 
you know that all eyes are on you and everyone's talking about you. You're As a candidate, you'll be thinking, should I give more? Or will this be too little for the fans? You know, so it's that limbo actually that, okay, I'll just trust the, I'll just trust my intuition about this and do this my way and make it work for me. Okay, up next, we have... Ikaw nag-introduce sa akin ito. You showed me her videos on her learning multiple languages and I was shocked. Oh, and it's Miss Iceland. Cute. I love how she, how Iceland has been sending very interesting girls with really fresh personalities. We didn't talk about this last year, right? diba? That we wish she placed higher last year, yeah. Miss Iceland. And this year, I hope she does. I really hope she does place higher. Because she's so interesting. Yes. Super interesting. And I think she is well-received in Florida as well. We've seen her, um, you know, hold out to go to, like, different sponsor events. So I think that's a good, you know, indicator. And... She knows three languages or four languages, including her own. So this and is not even like knowing a few words. It's like yeah. communicating fluently exactly. in yes. different languages with the accent and everything and the intonations. Exactly. <laughs> She's a super cute Pokemon. Is that politically a politically she correct is. thing to say? Diba, pero she's so fuzzy. I don't know. When so you say cute. cute and Pokemon in one sentence, it's always diba, butter. <laughs> Cute lang. Anyway, <laughs> going back, um, swim, I don't really remember. But I, think, but I think the evening gown performance was just enough for me to remember, to completely forget about swim. Because for me, at least for the fashion perspective, a lot of them went into the bling-bling type of gowns. I mean, the, it became redundant. So if I were a candidate, and I feel like everybody else is doing the same thing. Will I elevate what I'll be wearing? Maybe with my personality, I'll pull back a little bit. And this is exactly what she did. Instead of going head to head with the other blingy stuff, she gave them the simplicity of a Calvin Klein. That was a really nice decision yes. to go for a midnight blue gown that really didn't have a lot of frou-frou details. So you can just focus on her form. You could focus on the contrast between her dark blue gown and her light blue eyes. And then I'm done. Yeah, it was clean, classy. And my reservation with her in the beginning was like, will she not get noticed? Because she's like the kind of candidate you root for because she's sentimentally your favorite because you know that she can speak well. She's so interesting. She can give those trivias to the judges during the closed door interview and they'll be so entertained by her. But showing us style, showing us that she has presence during this prelim competition, she really established herself to be one of the front runners. Okay, next. On our list is someone I was surprised with today because I didn't really notice her at first. And that is Miss Jamaica. Mm. It's still vivid in my memory. Like her styling, her gown. Uh, it was perfect. It was the moment that the gown is so beautiful, but it also looks super beautiful on the girl wearing it. Like it was really made for her. It was just one of those moments when all the stars aligned. True, 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 true. True. Um, before this, before our schedule, I was in the middle of filming my YouTube content as well for my favorites. And I remember talking about Jamaica in a super endearing way. And I likened her to that new Barbie doll that I got from the 80s. She was tall. She had a small face. She had dark, dark skin. And I remember that when I got that Barbie doll, I also got a dress that was super sparkly. And you know how it brought back memory seeing her that way? That is like my real life version of the Barbie doll dreams that I had back in the 80s. So all that flush of nostalgia and then seeing her look like a Versace model in that beautifully, you know, sparkly pink gown. Because not a lot of ladies wore pink. Most of them yeah. wore blue or maybe some shades of gold and nude that really looked dead on screen. So 
she wore pink just so because the lights weren't doing them the any lights. favors. Exactly. So girls, if you're if you're not so sure what the lights would do to you, either you go for a really punchy color or you go for embellishments that are just high octane. It wasn't just beading nickel, it looked like foil. So that's yeah. why I mean, even in the darkness, it shone bright. I have yet to um, come across any interviews or contents of Jamaica actually speaking, but I feel like she's powerful enough to earn a spot in our top 10. Um, I feel like her beauty and styling and everything, I don't even want to get into details anymore, although you covered a lot of that as well. But Rohini, it's the kind that you don't need to explain anymore because exactly people like it's like a people understand pop, it. yes yeah like it, it's a unanimous decision um, like you don't have to have any disclaimers or explain why it's more beautiful than the other people just know yes <laughs> the taste level is that high exactly okay so now we have mentioned seven already, seven um, ladies who occupy our top 10 spots. I, I will give my two other ladies that didn't make it to your list and you would give yours as well. And of course, the last uh, spot to complete the circle of 10 goes to Rabia Mateo, the Philippines, of course. But we will have a lengthier discussion on that later on in this video because we want to dig deeper. This one, oh, I, yeah. I was very surprised. I was surprised that she didn't make it to your list, but I really want Miss Myanmar to make it to the top 10 because with everything that's happening in her country and then the statement she made during the national costume competition is a strong one as well. And I was like, okay, usually naman Myanmar, they always excel in that cost competition. So that wasn't really a surprise, but will she make it to the top 10? And can I just say, iba yung ganda niya ngayon. Like, Myanmar was serving us space. She had that glow. Of all the days na Myanmar can achieve her perfect look sa preliminary competition pa talaga. And I feel like the stars really align for her, like, tonight. So, she has a shot. I really want her to be part of that. Shempre more Asians, more fun. Um, I agree with you. Although I didn't have her in my overall list, I did include her in my swimsuit list because even before um we started learning about Myanmar and um what was happening in their country, the first uh footages that we knew of her was of her walking by the poolside uh in a two piece. So we knew early on that she had that body that it was well proportioned and even her walk was on the classy side knowing that she had the baboon body we really waited for that because we knew that was where she was really going to perform it's just a bonus that her face turned out to be the same in her photographs because this is something that a lot of people it was better started. than the ones in exactly. the photographs because i stalked her after the nat boss because mm -hmm. she caught my attention there but in the preliminary competition, her her look was really perfect. Like she didn't even achieve it in her previous photo shoots. That's why I was really surprised by her look tonight. I just really hope Nicole that they take notice because, um, of course, these countries are not the sash factor country. So mm -hmm. I hope that they take notice and take a chance yeah. on these other girls because. That face, that body, that story, that drive, and that determination to get herself out there, represent yeah. Myanmar in a foreign land. At this time of the pandemic, I mean, everything must have some reason, you know, yes. why she should be given that spot. I don't know. Yes. Fingers crossed for Myanmar. Okay, so the next girl um, that takes the ninth spot on my list is Peru. Because she's just been perfect. During the competition, she slayed. Even if her evening gown was not the one I would... I feel like she could have worn something better that complemented her better. But the way she posed... To show her S line to the camera at exactly that position, that was like next level performance because not a lot of girls knew how to play with the camera and connected that. So her establishing that now, 
pa o S9 o tabe. Me too. You know, I really wouldn't remove Peru from the list. It's just that I am a little surprised that she isn't attacking this competition as a heavy favorite to the point of uh, people talking about her as someone who's just there to claim her crown. I haven't heard talks like that. I mean, I honestly thought that it would be that scenario where we would have a Demi Lee moment or a Catriona mm. moment, but I was just surprised at how stiff the competition is that she is unable to really ace, you know, the segments and even the pre-pageant activities. So she did have a really good showing at National Costume, but yeah. Of course, we all know this is a non-scoring event, so mm -hmm. technically, it really doesn't matter. So for her to do something with uh, her swimsuit presentation, not so much really. I, I think what happened with Evening Gown is that if it were something to do with scoring, for me, she would lose points in the actual gown mm -hmm. and the styling. Yeah. So maybe mm -hmm. those two points alone could really hurt her in the competition but i but don't not know enough this though is not enough yeah to exactly pick her not out, enough. you know yes so i don't know if there is really enough time because prior to all of this she seems like the full package so i don't know for me she is a question mark only because i didn't really see that she would have a difficult time in establishing herself so that's just yeah. it. But other than that, the face is immaculate. The eyes are crazy beautiful. So yeah. I hope um, they give this to Peru. I mean, Peru has been doing really well for the past how many years? And the last Miss Universe from Peru was way back in the 1960s. So I understand the thirst and the hunger. And always playing second fiddle to Philippines. So I understand, you know, the giggle factor of Peru. I just don't know if Janik has the giggle factor right now to fight for it. Yeah. Yeah, mm, yeah I totally get what you mean, though. Yung tipong, akala mo, manlalampaso siya. Mm -mm. Yung ganong performance. Medyo, Although, baka manlampaso, pero it kind of took time. Alam mo yun? Yeah, get So, oh. Hi. Ang hirap templahin, no? But then, at the same time, I think we would all agree that her performances has they still are flawless and clean. Like, wala ka masabi. I don't know. This time, let's do your list. Like, the last two girls we didn't agree on. We didn't agree on. Oh! You didn't include Panama. Uh, but I think I understand why. Because sometimes when these girls come in, they look really eye candy. They look like the Miss Universe prototype. But then they're lacking in one thing. But I just feel like because prelims and the activities designed at Miss Universe this year is more on showing your physique and your pretty face, not so much on showcasing your social work and your advocacy, not mm -hmm. so much on speaking engagements. I feel like she aced the two events for prelims, mm -hmm. which is on a more yeah. physical level. So just on that note, yeah. hindi na natin isasama yung other aspects of being a beauty queen. I think she is above and beyond. I mean, that body is undeniable. Mm -hmm. Plus, she made a really good decision naman in evening gown to wear something snake-like and slinky and close to the body and clean and well-made and sparkly mm -hmm. enough with a different color. So just for those little decisions that turn out to be right, I think that's, I mean, had this been like a, a mobile game, that could be something like be likened to, I don't know, maybe getting like a treasure box because she's, you know, getting points for the little things. And by yeah. the end of it, oh, I won in this level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If she does win, that would be like a beautiful summary just <laughs> of her journey. <laughs> Okay, so now we are going to be talking about Rabia Mateo, Miss Universe Philippines, Miss Universe Journey so far. 
So before we dive into that, I would just like to ask you guys to like, subscribe, follow, comment down below. Like we would love to hear what you have to say as well. You're like if we missed any of the girls, um, who were your picks that were like, on our list? So yeah, and also you can subscribe to Tita Lavinia's channel as well. She always updates right after the event. She does a live session. So kung kailangan nyo ng kausap at alam pong maraming nakakailangan ng kausap at hawak kamay dyan, mag-subscribe kayo sa channel niya. At lagi ako ng don lurker ako, pero ang dami nyo na nag-comment. Di na ako na ikihalo. <laughs> Nahirapan din ako. <laughs> okay, so now let's get into the knit and grit of everything. And well, parang ayo kasi siya simulan ng before the pageant season officially began because I feel like it was this whole experimental phase that we should give to the girls also. Now, what works, what doesn't. I know there was a lot of ruckus surrounding, like, his styling ni Rabia. And at least, nakapag-adjust siya. Like, come Miss Universe season, she's serving us look after look. And I think a lot of us were very happy about it. I'm happy about it. I don't know with you guys. I'm happy You're happy about it? it? Oh, that's good. <laughs> so <laughs> now, let's fast forward to the National Costume Competition. Mabilisan lang naman because alam kong hinimay mo na to sa channel mo. So I think kasi na sa National Costume, the sentiments of the people are always divided. <laughs> like, eh, hindi pa yung nag, ano talaga, like, wow, lahat gusto yun. So feeling ko it's a normal Sorry. reaction lang naman to it. And Nicole, add ko lang. Um, I think people are forgetting that there are two important things about what happened to the costume. First of all, the original maker, Sir Rocky Gathercold, passed away passed in the middle yeah. of completion. So, another thing is that, of course, Rabia had to leave earlier than usual because the Philippines was gonna close itself because of the renewed lockdown. So, if they had plans to complete the costume and other components of the costume that had to be halted. So, completion of the costume and when I say completion this meant the accessories because they totally changed the headpiece from the original version of Sir Rocky Gatherpool with the sun's rays. It's a little different. They commissioned Sir Manny Halasan two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So, for Sir Manny mm -hmm. to come up with the accessories in time for Shamsi's departure to Florida. It makes more sense now that most likely Rabia got frustrated in the middle of, you know, the craziness because she was whisked in um, the dressing room alone to put together her costume and she tried putting on the headdress um, from Sir Manny who knew early on that his creations may not even work given the limited mm. amount of time, and then given that it was what we call in the Philippines, Suntok Sabwan. So, Sir Manny, mm. with my conversations with him, seemed that he understood why his pieces weren't worn because he knew that maybe the measurements were off. So, Rabia tried it, the headdress, and then some pieces must have been really sharp that she got into an accident. That's why there were reports that she bled. There were photos of, you know, some blood droppings on her stockings and her shoes. So Rabia really had, you know, underwent like an emotional roller coaster for somebody who is academic, for somebody who is very driven, and for components of your national costume not to work at that same moment must have been really tough for her. So we really have considering to this ready. is the first big event. Exactly. Diba? Parang first appearance mo siya eh. And so, she has talagang... been facing, you know, all of the segments, all of yeah. the appearances. And to falter in one, you know, uh, one, you know, one event, in, diba? Parang it's devastating. Feeling ko, gets na mga matatalino yan eh. Yung sobrang devastating kasi akala mo isang question lang yung hindi mo nasagot but it bothers you like the whole day. So, feeling ko yun yung nangyari sa akin. And even worse, yung it's something na kahit na prepared ka, wala ka namang control over. So, now we move on to her interview which I think is the reason why we're also confident of Rabia because we know that she has a story. She has a personality. And when she shared that she rapped in front of the judges, I was like, okay, 
this Not girl this. is serving something uh-uh. different. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. So, ikaw. Um, ako naman, I have no basis. I mean, I know that Rabia can ace this. I, I know that she has the personality. She has, you know, a bag full of stories. I mean, it's always interesting to have a girl with a lot of stories so that, you know, you don't recycle the same things over and over. But a lot of the admins out there, the hardworking admins in pageantry, they have a thing now where they screenshot everything. So they screenshot every frame of, let's say, a TikTok video that lasts for 15 seconds. And when you look at the, the photos in progression, you get to see, wow, this exactly is personality stamp on a yeah. photo. So you get to see like, as maybe a couple of seconds of exposure and then you have the hand gestures, you have the stance, you have the way she laps at. Um, the judges, so you know, her performance, is, you know, actual interaction going on that she's not just standing there answering a couple of questions, she is conversing, she is engaging with the judges. So, for me, that's a good sign, yeah. And I always um, go back to this memory of mine where I first saw her connecting to the audience, and I think she was doing a charity event or something, but she was speaking. Um, on the stage, and then she just had this connection with people. Like, alam niya kung paano makipsalamuha sa ibang tao to connect with them. And that's something you really can't just teach. It's not easy to teach, talaga. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's her certain special ingredient. So, which she also brought to her Telemundo interview, which I watched. So, she had that vulnerability. Like, alam mo yung shinere niya yung mga big issues she faced that I know you, on your page, you tried to do damage control in. <laughs> but she shared it with <laughs> such <laughs> candidness. Alam mo yun, like, hindi niya ginawang whole drama thing siya. Like, sabi siya lang in passing, like, it was something that every other girl probably went through, whether or not they're a beauty queen. So, I like that she gave that vulnerability and Kahit na she had that um, meltdown or crying scene sa IG stories niya. Like, knowing her, she's so resilient. and dami na niyong pinagdaanan. And what's good about Rabia is she always bounces back. Like, we've seen that happen already. Like, yung learning curve niya, steep talaga, mabilis. And that's what, it, what is important in pageantry. So, I think this year, overall, we sent the perfect candidate who's warm and humble and relatable. I think that's Ooh. enough. That's more than enough. Oh. Well, finally, prelims. In summary, I feel like she rocked the swimsuit round. Yeah. My do yan, yung ano niya, balakang niya, sis. Wait, do you think ako yan? Nagamit my do sa... yan, sis. Kamitin ko nga yan sa caption ko, my do yan sa ano, sa balakang. It's Tama. true. So mag-cheat about the hair. <laughs> I go. Because we have mixed, no, it's not even mixed. I think a lot of us were not super happy with the hair. We wanted a sleeper look, sana for the hair, just to balance the mm. um the formality of the actual dress. Because the dress yeah. seemed more of an evening gown for formal events than an evening gown for a pageant, right? Okay. I mean, am I on the right track here? So, the hair, pala, um, she couldn't really do anything about it because we're getting a lot of. DMs the parang tita, why isn't she styling herself? That's supposed to be the way. Didn't you um, like train for that? Something like that. But I got a little bit of chichi from someone that uh, it was actually the sponsors who took the reins and fixed her up. So if that's the case, um, she if she was handpicked to, you know, showcase what the MUBA team um, is working with right now, wala tayong matagawa talaga doon. So, it was all love from the MUBA team. Now, um, it may be comforting to know that when I asked Rabia about how she felt about um, her total look today, she said that, you know, she is aware of the talks of other people, but that she felt super beautiful this evening. And she was really confident this evening though. So, parang, 
totally different dun sa mental break. Kaya lang kasi kasiyahan din ni. Eh. Alam mo yun? Oh, yun lang. Masaya siya. Masaya siya. Masaya siya. Masaya siya. Nagandahan daw siya sa sarili niya kagabi. Sabi ko, yun na mong pali. Huwag na tayo mag-usap-usap. Kasi, kung ano yung nararamdaman ng babae, yun yun ni, eh. Yun na yun. Happy daw siya. Ganda, ganda. Yung, the, the, the word was ang ganda ko kagabi. <laughs> so, di din tayo. Doon ko sa nagandaan ka sa sarili mo ba? Diba? Ganda naman tayo. Oo, no. Go, boss. Diba? Laban mo yan. Mo. You know what? Um, again, share ko na rin. Kasi, diba, it, different yung perspective natin dito eh. Our eyes have been sharpened. We created a whole community and pageantry. I have a career in deciphering looks, in decoding, you know, fashion choices. So, feeling ko, dahil sobrang hasang-hasa ang Pilipinas, we magnify everything. Like, we know that this gown needed a slit to open it up. Uh-uh. Like, we know that, like, little things that other pageant fans may not even understand what we're whining mm. about. Because apparently, when I asked Rabia this evening, some of the Latin fans who approached her mentioned that, you know, what are you guys talking about? It was beautiful. It was nice. So, di ba, dun ka mapapaisip na, ano ba, sobrang invested ba tayo? Ano ba nangyari sa atin? Kasi sa kanila, okay naman yung rehistro doon. Nagmamahala naman sila doon. Alam ko naman din, may kulang din sa sexy factor. Di naman ako bulag doon. But, It was beautiful and I don't think that that glorious, you know, presentation won't be enough for the judges to take notice. And yeah. I think one of the judges now clapped huh, when, you know, when they saw her. And this judge is known to be someone who is super sexy, who wore a chain male. Zuleika! Okay, so that wraps it up for our very comprehensive review. Thank yeah, you so much for watching our special episode. And Lai, Lavinia, thank you so much for joining me, my partner in crime. This is our usual annual hangout na talaga. Did we redeem ourselves? Trust. Not quite. <laughs> we, will, we will be judged. We'll see when we release this. But I... Um, <laughs> So, guys, if you want to get into more details, all those pageant enthusiasts and aficionados out there, subscribe to Tita Lavinia's channel here on YouTube to get all the updates. Uh, lalo na if you want to talk fashion. Yeah, she's the girl for that. <laughs> and, um, trigger warning, she gives really honest opinions. Nobody can hold her back, so... Kahit na friends kami and hindi kami lagi same na opinion, tanggap namin isa't isa. <laughs> As it should be, di ba? Hindi walang personal. Also, um, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more pageant content because we have more pageants coming up this year. And I'll talk to you guys again next week after the final night of Miss Universe 2020 where we will digest the Q&A portions of the ladies, my favorite part. Q&A reviews, everyone. So I'll see you there. In the meantime, stay safe.